See that light shining up there in the sky? That's Jupiter. It's the only thing you can see in the sky tonight. Except, of course, for the full moon. Now, I know that Jupiter is many times larger than the moon. But from here, compared to the moon, Jupiter looks tiny. That's because Jupiter is much further away. The further away a thing is, the smaller it looks. Let me show you. You see that little fellow standing over there? He looks small, doesn't he? Watch. Say, fellow, would you mind coming over here, please? <clears throat> well, it just goes to show you that sometimes moving a thing closer doesn't change the size very much. Now, there's something mysterious going on here, right? Yep, but it's not magic. Well, it must be an optical illusion because this room is not ordinary. You're right. It's called the Ames Room, and it's built in a special way to confuse you. Look, Trini and I are about the same height, right? Right. Well, over here, I can't touch the ceiling. But over here, I can. And the tiles on the floor, they look like they're square, but they're not. How do we know that? Look, let me, let me borrow your book a second. Now, watch. The corner of the tiles aren't square, like the corner of the book. And the sides of the tiles aren't equally long. Huh. And look, if you look at it from down here, the floor is tilted. You can see it. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Well, not only that, but the wall on this side of the room is six feet. And the wall on the other side is three, six, nine, almost 12 feet long, so this wall is larger than that wall. I think I'm getting a headache. Well, maybe you need to see a doctor. Mark, this is Dr. Joan Gerges. She's an experimental psychologist. Hi, Dr. Gerges, how are you? Fine. Can you explain what an experimental psychologist does? I study how people see, how they understand what they see, what they think about what they see, things like that. I get it. Well, then maybe you can explain to me how come I was so confused before. <laughs> well, I think I can. Let's look at this model of the Ames Room. You see, you were expecting an ordinary room with rectangular walls where the opposite sides are always the same length. Right. But in the Ames room, the opposite sides aren't the same length at all. Look, let me show you with the ruler. This wall is a lot shorter than the ruler. Mm -hmm. And this one is a lot longer. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Here, check it out for yourself. You take the room apart. comes apart. <laughs> Only here it comes apart. <laughs> There's a big difference. Ah, uh, you're right. This wall is a lot smaller than this wall right here. Well, you couldn't have been expected to know that when you first walked into the Ames room. Yeah, but is this really the way the Ames room looked? I mean, it looks different here. Well, see, this is a scale model. It's smaller, but it's exactly the same shape. See, one inch in this model is equal to one foot in the Ames room. So this model is exactly like the Ames room, only in miniature. Mm -hmm. And in the real Ames room, the walls are different lengths. It's just like on a map, Mark. You know how one inch stands for, say, a mile? Mm -hmm. See, exact scale always works, as long as you keep in mind how long a mile or a foot really is. <laughs> Now listen, all ye faithful and loyal subjects of the king. I have a question to ask you. How come that duke has a bigger castle than mine, and I'm the king? 
Oh, no, Your Majesty. We measured them both, remember? I measured our castle a hundred feet long and a hundred feet wide. And the Duke measured his castle a hundred feet long and a hundred feet wide. Well, how come it looks bigger than mine? I don't know. Uh, let's ask him. Can I help you? From now on, we use my foot to measure a foot. And that's how rulers were born. Now, we all agree that this yardstick is three feet long, right? Right. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm going to measure the windows. This window is about two and a half feet long, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But this one is almost three and a half feet long. So actually, it's larger than that one, even though they both look the same. Hmm. Now, where were you standing when you first came in? Right about here. Okay. Now, from this corner, you were one, two, three, four paces away. And from that corner, you were one, two, two paces away. So actually, that corner was twice as far from you than that corner was. Mark, let's talk some more about why you got confused in the Ames room. I think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Mark, when you came into the Ames room, you were standing about there. Mm -hmm. Lisa was standing there. Right. Trini was standing way back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, Trini was a lot further away from you than Lisa was. Yeah. And that meant that she made a smaller image in your eye. Ah, that's better. Today, we're going to look at your eye. Hmm. Aha. Ah, that's better, yes. Now, this is your iris. It's colored brown, green, or blue to keep out light. And this is your pupil a hole to let in light. It gets small when there's a lot of light, and when it's dark, your pupil gets larger to let in more light. Now, why is light important? Because it reflects off everything into your cornea, then through your pupil and lens, and makes a picture at the back of your eye, on the retina. So what if it's upside down? The brain thinks an upside down image on the retina is right side up. And that's how you see. Now, do you see? <laughs> Still not quite understand. Can, explain yeah. Yeah. Explain Can you explain it one more time? Okay, let's find a slightly different way. Trini and I are about the same height. Right. Yep. Okay? All right, now, Trini, walk way back in the room. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs> now that she's back there, she's making a much smaller image in our eyes than she was making when she was up here. Right. Does she look any smaller? No. No, oh, she looks like she's the same height. Yep. <laughs> All right, the reason for that is that there are lots of clues in that room that tell you that she's further away. Yeah, right, like, you know that counter that Trini's leaning on? We know how high that counter is, so we know that Trini couldn't have gotten any smaller, otherwise she'd be the same size as the counter. Ah, oh, I see, you're right, yeah. Can okay. I go back now? Come on, Trini, come on back. Bring me an apple. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, now in the Ames room, all right, you thought that Trini and Lisa were the same distance away. Remember when we measured and we found out that one wall was longer than the other mm -hmm. and that, in fact, Trini was really further away? Mm -hmm. But you didn't know that when you walked in. You thought it was a rectangular room with walls the same length. Right. So on the one hand, you thought they were the same distance away, but on the other hand, because Trini really was further away, she was making a smaller image in your eye. Mm -hmm. And that's what was confusing you. You had two different sets of clues. So what we think we see can actually be pretty deceiving. Hey guys, I bet you can't tell me what this is. Um, just looks like a bunch of black dots to me. Yeah, right. a piece of paper. Take another guess. A picture of a mountain or something like that. Yeah, or some trees or something, I don't know. Trees? No, it's a picture of me made by a computer. Oh wow, that's, that's really great, good. Is that neat? You've got the idea now, Trini. Sometimes it takes a lot of different clues before we know what something is. In this picture, the eye and the brain put together all those black dots so that it looks like your face. Right, and the moral of that story is, if you don't know what you're looking at, or if it's confusing, you have to find more clues. Now that's good advice for the Bloodhound Gang. Whenever there's trouble, we'll the double with the Bloodhound Gang. If you've got the crime, we've got the time. No problem. This 
bass whistle sounds at such a high pitch, you minions can't hear it. But dogs can. And some are trained to bark when they hear it. Well, that's great. But if you can't hear it, how do you know it works? I got it! But on detective base, you see, whenever there's trouble, we're there on double. Mr. Blunner isn't here. Yes? Yes, Professor? Got it. We'll be there right away. We'll be where? To Fasa. Miss Donald will tell us something about Princess tomorrow. Who? What kind of a name is that? It sounds like a fortune teller to me. Come on, we'll be late. I am Professor Diablo. Good morning, gentlemen and lady. I have asked the Bloodhound Detective Agency to guarantee that what is about to happen is no trick, absolutely and positively, yes? Gentlemen, you are gamblers. You bet against the unknown future. But is the future unknown? May I introduce the amazing psychic and seer of the future, Princess Tomorrow. Kindly be seated, Princess. <laughs> Gentlemen, observe. Princess, travel forward in time. It is now late afternoon. Watching the last race at Emerald Meadows, tell us the future. Tell us what you see. Professor, give us a look. Perhaps she is mistaken, Mr. Downtown Fats. We will know tomorrow. Sealed. No one tampers. Now one of the bloodhound detectives will drop this into the mail slot. Addressed to the bloodhound detective agency to keep safe, yes? From this moment, my hands will not again touch Princess Tomorrow's prediction. Mail it, young man. Tomorrow, at the same hour, here, we will meet and open the envelope, yes. Until then, I am your obedient servant, Professor Diablo. Mammy, is coming! What are you doing? There's something wrong about the way Professor Diablo handled the envelope yesterday. He licked the flap, right? Right. Well, then, why did he wet the stamp on a sponge? You think it's a clue? Well, I think it's peculiar. <laughs> Is Princess Tomorrow a fake? Tune in tomorrow for part two of the story. the eyes and the brain work together to tell us what's near and what's far. 
and we've seen how we can be fooled. Joan, how did you ever get interested in psychology in the first place? Yeah. Well, I was interested in people. I was particularly interested in children. I was interested in how they learn and how they think, how they see things. And I wanted to study it. Well, what prompted you to go into it, like, when you were growing up? Well, I don't know if I really knew I was interested in psychology. I was interested in things like that. I didn't call it psychology until I was, was much older. I was about 21 when I finally figured out that it was psychology. But I was interested in those kinds of things from the time yeah. I was very young. Mm -hmm. So what did you start out studying first? First, I started out studying chemistry. And then I decided that I was more interested in people. And so I studied literature. And then I figured out I could put people and science together. And that's when I decided to study psychology. Oh, I see. So what kind of stuff do you do now with your psychology, the experimental psychology? Well, I'm mostly interested in perception. I'm mostly interested in why does the world look the way it does? How do people see the world? And why do they see it the way they see it? Mm -hmm. And lately, I've been interested in things that fool people, like the Ames Room. I'm right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and things like that are called visual illusions. I brought a couple of them today. This is called the Mueller Liar Illusion, Mark. Can you figure out which of these two lines is longer? Well, it looks like the bottom line is longer. You're right, it looks that way, but it's not true. That's why uh -huh. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's catching on. It's getting better. Why don't you measure them and see what, what really is going on here? Okay, that one's about eight and a half inches, and the top one's about eight and a half inches. That's right, they're exactly the same length. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. This one's called the Ponzo illusion. Mm -hmm. People often think that this one looks like a railroad track in a picture, with it these does. being the ties of the railroad track, so that it looks like a three-dimensional drawing right. of a railroad track. And they're going away from you. Like That's that. right. Mm -hmm. Which of those, these two lines do you think is longer? Well, it <laughs> looks like <laughs> the top line is longer. That's what it looks like. Why don't you measure it again and check it out? I bet you I find the same thing. thing. <laughs> uh, that one's about five and a half, and that one's about five and a half. half. That's right. They're exactly yeah. the same length. Mm -hmm. These two illusions, as well as a lot of others, were first drawn about, oh, 100 or 125 years ago. Really? And psychologists have been doing experiments on them, measuring them, changing them, measuring them again, ever since then, and arguing about what goes on, mm -hmm. arguing about what why one line looks longer than the other, mm -hmm. and they still haven't come to any conclusion. Really? Three Two One Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.